evolutionist believes that genetic mutations are the stuff of life and thus the stuff of evolution. Actually, genetic mutations have to be the process of life for evolutionists because without the existence of an intelligent designer, there really is no other explanation for how one kind of living organism eventually, over millions of years, turns into another kind of living organism. The problem with the genetic mutation argument is that every true form, the key words are true form, of genetic mutation discovered shows that mutations result in a decrease of useful information or an increase of destructive information to the DNA information cycle, often with horrible results rather than evolutionary results. No form of true genetic mutation has ever been shown to produce anything usefully additional to a living organism. Mutations have not produced eyes, arms, legs, fins, lungs, or reproductive systems, for example. Dr. Ernest Mayer, professor of zoology at Harvard, is famous for the following quote of scientific truth. To believe that such drastic mutations would produce a viable new type capable of occupying a new adaptive zone is equivalent to believing in miracles. There are two possible sources of the genetic variability which is required and able to drive changes within species, genetic recombination and mutation. Mutations are random nucleotide alterations such as copying errors or changes induced by external mutagens. In contrast, genetic recombination is performed by the cell during the preparation of gametes like sperm, egg, or pollen, all of which are used for sexual reproduction. Genetic recombination is the primary source of the genetic distinctions between individuals in a living population and must therefore be the principal driving force behind changes within species. Although genetic recombination was discovered and scientifically proven after the formation of Darwin's theories of evolution, it is still claimed by evolutionists today that mutations are the source of any natural variation within species, and the evolution takes it even an incomprehensible step further by claiming that ultimately these mutations cause one kind of living organism to become another kind of completely viable and evolved living organism. This is a supposed phenomena which has never been observed in the totality of man's existence. In comparison to recombination, the changes induced by mutations are totally insignificant. Mutations are also disruptive to normal gene function and are often corrected by the cell whenever detected. Now let's deal with a few of the most recent evolutionary arguments that supposedly prove that evolution occurs through mutation. And the more that real science investigates these claims, the more pseudoscientific evolution appears. The evolutionist will ask, what about the mutation of viruses? For example, the flu virus becoming more and more resistant to vaccines. Bacteria do not become resistant to antibiotics merely by experiencing genetic mutations. In fact, there are at least two important genetic mechanisms by which resistance may be conferred. First, there is the process of conjugation during which two bacterial cells join and an exchange of genetic material occurs. Certain enzymes exchanged in this process coincidentally assist in the breakdown of antibiotics, thus making the bacteria resistant to antibiotics. Secondly, bacteria can incorporate into their own genetic machinery foreign pieces of DNA by either of two types of DNA transposition. In transformation, DNA from the environment, perhaps from the death of another bacterium, is absorbed into the bacterial cell. In transduction, a piece of DNA is transported into the cell by a virus, for example. As a result of incorporating new genetic material, an organism can become resistant to antibiotics. So in other words, bacteria and viruses adapt rather than purely mutate. This medical scientific fact is now so well known that many evolutionists have dropped this argument for their proof. Another evolutionist argument is, what about the mosquito's amazing ability to resist each new repellent used against it? The source of the mosquito's ability to resist repellents is found in adaptation ability within its genome. As it adapts, it is still a mosquito, and no new body parts have been found. This amazing ability is identified as natural selection or adaptation, not evolution. No new species or additional body parts are arising from this process, and furthermore, older pesticides can remain effective, especially if a new generation of mosquitoes are not exposed. 
But what about bacteria developing the ability to digest nylon? In the 1970s, a team of Japanese scientists did come across a bacterium that was able to digest nylon. Yet again, it's not exactly the vindication that evolution required. The mutation that caused the bacterium to do this was not found in the chromosomes, meaning that it could never be transferred during binary fission. Also important to note is that the plasmids, an independent circular self-replicating DNA molecule often found in bacteria that carries only a few genes, the plasmids in the bacterium have been noted for their ability to adapt to new diets. This would mean that the bacterium adapted. It did not evolve from a mutation. Every single other example that evolutionists give for genetic mutation as the stuff of life falls into the categories just mentioned. Genetic recombination, conjugation, transformation, transduction, or vital enzyme exchange through plasmids. For a mutation to cause one type of living organism to turn into another type of viable living organism would indeed be a, well, a miracle. Now the evolutionist is back to square one, looking at an intelligent designer. It seems the poor evolutionist will always be left reaching for pseudoscientific arguments to explain the miracle of living things, brought to us through a very intelligent designer. Now you know the truth.